welcome to GeoNADIR. Just like to give you a quick orientation into all the different things that you can see on the platform so you can jump right in and get started for yourself. So first of all, there's three key areas that you might want to look at. The first here that you see is my project. So these are all the different mapping projects that I'm working on at the moment that involve drone mapping data. So that you can access your projects over on the left hand side here. Now, just above my projects, you'll see my data sets. This is a listing of all the different data sets that I've uploaded to the platform. So you can zoom in on any one of those that you like. I'm using the shift key here as well as my mouse to zoom into a specific area. And you'll see the listing on the left hand side in the table of contents. So this will allow me to get more details and to visualize some of the data that I've uploaded. So you can have a look at any, any one of those data sets. If you want to zoom in all the way, you'll see the author mosaic appear on the platform. Or if you want to look in more detail at any of the data sets, you simply click on the data set card. Now, when you do that, you'll be able to see a range of different bits of information about the data set. So you'll see the location where it was captured, the area it covered, and the ground sample distance. So this helps you understand a little bit about the resolution of the data set. Now, if you're looking to push the author mosaic into a GIS platform, then you've got the tile mapping server link that you can access there. Any information that the person has manually entered about the data set will appear in this section here. I've been a little bit lazy and haven't put too much information in. Everything else is automatically extracted. So you can see who uploaded the data set. In that case, in this case, it's me, the date that I uploaded, it, how many photos, the size of the photo and the platform that was used at the time. Now, if I want to look at any of the original images that were uploaded in order to create this author mosaic, I can simply click on this one here and then scroll through any of those photos and I can enlarge them and toggle through with my arrow keys if I'm interested in looking at those in a little bit more detail. Now, when we look at the data set here, you can also make some small measurements if you like. So you can measure lines and areas on the map here. You can also change the base map. So at the moment, I'm looking at the, at the map view. I can change that to satellite view. And I can also completely clear the base map if I like. At the moment, I'm happy with map view. So I'll leave it there at the moment. Now, when we create the author mosaic from the photos that you upload, we also create a digital surface model and a digital terrain model. So the digital surface model shows the, the lumps and bumps, including trees and houses, for example. And the digital terrain model attempts to get rid of the trees and houses and just looking at the terrain that's underneath. Now, if there's really dense vegetation, this doesn't work quite so well. So you can see in the areas of dense vegetation here, the digital terrain model looks quite similar to, to the digital surface model. So that's the My Data Sets area, and that's a really good summary of all the data sets that you've captured and a really good way for you to manage those for yourself. Now, if you've shared any of those data sets to the global map, so you'll see that these ones are shared, they've got a little global map icon on them. If you've shared any of those to the global map, they will appear down here on the global map along with everybody else's data as well. So you'll see that there's a really large coverage of all different types of data sets all over the world and you can jump in and have a look at any of those that you're interested in as well so for example if we want to go let's have a let's pop in down the us here and let's zoom in a little bit more and and see what we can find perhaps in the tucson area around here i know there's some really good data sets that have been captured in this region so you'll see that they continue to expand out in terms of the data sets here on the left hand side now let's go all the way in and you'll start to see that we can we have some urban urban data and we've also got a thermal data set there as well that we'll be able to see as we zoom all the way in another way to do this as you're zooming around is if you find a data set on the listing that you're interested in is you can simply click on this and go to zoom to location that will take you directly to that particular data set now, if you're also interested in looking at, say, data sets, only those that are within the category grassland, for example, all you need to do is click on this sticker here and that will automatically filter all the data sets to those that are available within that category. You can use this tool also up here to filter your data sets as needed. So just finding the ones that you might be interested in looking at. And I'm just going to keep them as selected as all as opposed to just one of those. And that will show me all the data. 
Now let's jump back to the projects. I'm going to jump all the way into a project and show you what we can do inside of that. So you'll see that I've got many different projects and each of those projects consists of a number of different data sets. And a data set can be in many projects or it can be in no projects, that's okay as well. I'm going to jump straight into the Trinity Park demo project and show you some of the work that I've been doing here. So it automatically zooms to the area that I'm interested in. And this is the this is one of my local beaches, and I was particularly interested in monitoring this in times of in times of erosion and coastal change. Now the data set that you see on the top here is the one listed where it's a little bit darker than these vectors that are on the top. And so that's what that's what's easy to see at the moment. Now if you click the expand, you'll see you've got the author mosaic and you can use the opacity tool to change the opacity and start looking at things that are underneath it. You can also have a look at the DSM or the DTM there as well in the, in the similar way to the way we were looking at it when we were within the data set mode. Now you'll see that these are all the layers that are turned on, that they're a little bit darker and there's, there's an eyeball there as well. If you want to toggle that off, you just click the eyeball and you'll see the layer that's below. Now, as I mentioned, I'm interested in coastal erosion. So I want you to keep an eye down on the bottom right hand side here and while I've got this layer selected I'm going to use our compare tool and then use that to swipe like a curtain I guess and you'll be able to see the difference between those two data sets as I do that. So this is a really handy tool to look at the differences between different layers. You can do that in any of the vectors and the rasters as well. Now what you can also see here is that I have been doing some interpretation of the data set that um, that I've been working on and I've started to look at different vectors. So for example, I'm looking at an area of dead mangroves in here. And so you'll see that it's been outlined there as one single polygon and you can even see the area that that represents, which is 3,264 meters squared. And I've actually gone through and I've digitized quite a number of different categories around this area. And so I'm just turning them all on at the moment so you'll be able to see what that final version looks like. And you'll see also that you've, it tells you the number of polygons or lines or points if that's what you're using and the area covered in total as well as the area covered by any individual feature. So I could click on this particular swimming pool, for example, and it will tell me that that particular swimming pool is 23 metres squared. And so I can also click on features on the map and that will show me what that is. So I click on this one here and that shows me that that's my dead mangrove, dead mangrove feature at 3264. Or I could click on this one and it highlights that part of green vegetation here. So the table of contents is really linked to what we see here on the map. Now, if you want to add any additional features, it's really simple to do that. You've got all these tools up the top that allow you to draw extra features in. So this, this analysis was done on one of the smaller data sets from earlier, in, earlier a couple of years ago, where I, I had only captured a relatively small area. And so that's the only area that I analyzed. So you can see that the author mosaic just sitting below, and that's what's being completely analyzed. So if you do want to do more or perhaps you want to add extra layers of maybe priorities for sampling or something like that, you can do that by just adding new features here. So I can use the point tool up here on the left hand side or I can simply click the P button and that's going to enact that tool as well. So I'm going to drop a couple of points and you'll see how simple it is to just drop those points as easy as it is in any kind of drawing package and then you can change the name of that as well just simply by clicking clicking in the table of contents and changing that name you can change the color by clicking on the color patch as well and and really personalize your your project there and of course then the next thing is that when you are keen to share this with people that might be at the beginning of the project or halfway through or even at the end all you need to do is click up here to share and then you can add individuals emails in here to send them a message or you can simply copy link so you have control over what people can do whether you want them to edit to comment or just to view your project whether anyone in the link can comment view or edit it and what individuals are doing there as well so to comment on somebody's project is really simple so you're just going to click the comment button and then 
drop a comment here. So I might just say, for example, really dense vegetation here. And then perhaps another person might be coming in and they, they might later then want to respond to my comment here. And then they can also do that. So there's lots of different ways that you can communicate with people through your maps and you can be doing this in real time as well. So you could have someone on the other side of the country, other side of the world even, editing, commenting, viewing all these things in real time with you as you make your changes, which is a really exciting way that we can work, work with maps and collaborate with our colleagues and give information to our clients as well.